Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Lincoln Journal Star's Life in the Red podcast. Luke Mullen and Amy Just back with another weekly Nebraska basketball update. And this week, we're coming off uh, some road losses for the Husker teams. We're talking about some road struggles, uh, more pronounced, I think, in the men's team than the women's team, but something notable over the course of the season and some big games coming up this week uh, for both those teams. Um, certainly was maybe a little bit of missed opportunities last week, some big big games out there. Uh, we'll start start with the women's team, as we usually do. And of course, it was going to always be a challenge against Iowa. So much talent. 92-73, uh, Iowa took down Nebraska. And things start, start off on the wrong foot. I mean, it was, it was kind of the game where it was like they were going to need to battle the whole way start off down 9-0. That, that was not the start that they needed. It was not the start that they needed, and they never really recovered from that. Um, you just can't let Iowa do that to you. Granted, yes, it was in Iowa City, um, so that obviously helps a little bit, but you just you can't um, get down that early. Yes, they battled back a little bit in the second quarter, but you can't start off like that. It's so hard to regain your footing after that, um, especially against Iowa and, you know, Caitlin Clark. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, Iowa, they, they score about 90, 90 a game, and they were just over that, beat the season average a little bit uh, in this one. And, you know, it was actually a really good job to slow Clark down in the first half. Uh, pretty much all of her scoring came in the second, uh, 15 of her 27 uh, 15 of Iowa's 27 points in the third quarter came from Clark and 38 overall. I mean, obviously I mean, every time you watch her play, it's impressive, but obviously the way that she took over in that second half uh, was huge. And, you know, from a Nebraska standpoint, it was, I thought it was like, Hey, you're going to have to dig in on defense a little bit, or you're going to have to score with them, which neither, neither are ideal, but jazz Shelley, five eleven from three point range kept a minute, but they just didn't shoot at, at a high level. No, no. Um, and when you can't keep up with the clip that Iowa shoots at, you're going to be in for a long day. And and they were. Like, it's not like Nebraska shot horrifically yeah, yeah. bad, but Iowa's just shooting that much better. Yeah, Iowa was uh, over 50%, 52% in that one, Nebraska, 39%. So that was a, a big, big story of the game. And as we kind of go big picture talking about road struggles versus the home, uh, these are the stats for the women's team this year. Nine and two at PBA, one and one on the neutral court, and three and four on the road. I mean, it's it's not horrible. It's you know, it's it's pretty respectful, uh, especially when you consider the opponents they've lost to at home. I mean, it's 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 not bad, but at at a certain point, some of those road wins, it's it's been the the really the tough those quad one opponents on the road that have really given them all the trouble. Yeah, and look, they're still as of ESPN's b- women's bracketology. That posted yesterday, there's still an eight seed. Granted, it's in uh, South Carolina's uh, part of the bracket, so that'd be pretty tough. But um, the the powers that be still think relatively highly of what they've accomplished thus far, but they need to keep it going. And uh, tonight, we're recording this um, on a Wednesday afternoon before they play Purdue, a team that has been struggling more than Nebraska has. So that'll be crucial for them uh, to get that win uh, tonight. Yeah, certainly. I mean, the the season-long resume, playing a great conference, several really, really strong wins. And I think this week is kind of like take care of business. There's there's a lot more that they could lose this week than gain. As you mentioned, Purdue team lost six in a row. Uh, They're allowing 68.9 points per game. So good chance to get that offense going. And then Saturday at 2 o'clock, also another home game. Uh, Nebraska going up against last place Rutgers winless so far in conference play. So I think really these two games, it's, it's going to be Nebraska's the favorite and they just got to take care of business. Those two. Yeah. And it'll help get their confidence back after, you know, losing like they did um, last week. Yeah, certainly. So be interested to see uh, if the offense will shoot at a little bit improved clip in both those two games, uh, the women's team, again, two games at home uh, this weekend, Talking about road struggles, it has been the men's team that that's been really the hot hot topic that we got to talk about today, and it was it was an ugly one, seventy three fifty one to Maryland. I'll hit you with the stats right away because they're not pretty. Thirteen and one at PBA, incredible. That one, one loss, yep, an embarrassing loss, but to Creighton, yep. which okay, it is what it is. Yeah, 
one and zero on the neutral court. That's that's good against good a team. very bad yep. Oregon State team. And then one and five on the road for the men's team with that last win uh, on the road coming against K State, which that's looking pretty good. Yeah, that's but good the rest win. of them, not so much. Yeah. So I mean, every time these have all been Big Ten games, they've gone on the road. Uh, they they've they've lost pretty much all of them, um, and certainly. This one was a, a little bit disappointing, too, because they started off hot. Rink mask, hit that three-pointer, 12-2 lead. Like, they looked locked in, and then the turnovers, the rebounding, the offensive issues, it was just a lot of the same stuff we've seen kind of snowballing all at once. Yeah, and to me, and granted, I only watched the second half of that one, um, they just – they looked soft. Yeah. Like, they were not – as physical as they've been in games like their win over Purdue, for example, um, they just did not look physical at all in that one. And that was a big reason why they lost in the manner that they did against Maryland. Um, and they have had very, very physical practices since then. Fred Hoiberg was like, eh, screw uh, load management. <laughs> Almost four. Whoops. Um and we're gonna play. We're gonna be really, really tough in these three practices, um, because y'all are getting punked, um, and they're a little sore right now. But um, they need to be because if they keep playing like they did against Maryland, then they're they've got no chance um, this week, which is gonna be a, a tough week for them. Yeah, really good point about kind of the style of play because I, I would definitely say the same thing. Like, obviously, it's tough. You go on the road, you know, loud, juiced environment, but it's like you got to rise to that level, and that we've just not seen that from this team. It's been more of turning inward, get into your shell a little bit, and in particular, I mean, the struggles in this one, uh, Maryland pulled away 26-7, to seven, final 10 minutes of the first half. Uh, Nebraska turned the ball over 18 times over the course of the game. Maryland, 25 points off that. And the rebounds, Maryland out-rebounded them 43-25, whopping 17 offensive rebounds. I mean, those those stats are so ugly. Uh, but the good news is, as Fred Hoiberg said today, Juwan Gary, he's practicing. They're still uh, being a little bit careful, but his return, hopefully imminent here soon. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Um, I thought it was kind of odd that um... – they declared him out even before they would left before Maryland yeah. when he had, you know, tested it a little bit before the Ohio State game. It's all running together for me. Um, you know, was questionable to play in that one and then, you know, didn't go because he, you know, didn't quite trust it yet. And then they completely wrote it off for Maryland even before they got to Maryland, which I thought was interesting. But we will see if he goes through warmups tomorrow, um, what that will look like. Um if they want to win, having him would be a very big help because they have not been super great in the rebounding department um, without him. Yeah, that's a, putting it putting it a little lightly there. It I has, was mean yeah. earlier. I'll, I'll soften it up yeah. a little bit. I mean, it, it has been the struggle that they've had to deal with these last two games. And if we look at this week as kind of a, a take care of business for the women's team, this is a major, major opportunity for the men's team. Uh, to really secure perhaps another signature win for their postseason resume. Uh, that's because after this recent loss to Maryland, Nebraska now back to 58th in the NET rankings, but two quad one games this week, uh, starting off Thursday night at home. So big, number six Wisconsin coming to town, 7.30 p.m. Obviously, they're uh, uh, a very, like, well-rounded team, I'd say. You know, they get a lot of scoring from from different places, and that's going to be, a, I think, a big test that it's not, uh, not going to be a case of, you know, keying in on one guy. I mean, it's Nebraska's going to need that bench to to show up in this game, certainly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anything is possible. Um, as of right now, um, ESPN Bracketology has Nebraska as one of the first or one of the excuse me, the last four in. Um, so uh, a win over Wisconsin would be huge for them. I don't know if a loss would necessarily hurt them as bad because Wisconsin is so good. Um, they are the leader in the Big Ten right now. So that would be good, um, not only for their resume, but um, as a confidence booster. Yeah, absolutely. And also you have to consider, I mean, the, the quick turnaround here, two off days before they hit the road. Sunday, they will be playing at number 14, Illinois. That's 5.30 p.m. tip off. And obviously, I mean, if if this Wisconsin game gets away from them, 
you have to worry about the way that things would be heading with that, you know, a, a little bit of a losing skid here as possible. So I think at the very least, you got to see an improvement here against Wisconsin. Yeah, absolutely. Like, even if they don't win, they need to be more physical. They can't let Wisconsin grab double digit offensive rebounds. Like, they need to just be more well rounded in that area. Um, if Wisconsin shoots at a really high clip, like they have, uh, at least make it hard for them, like contest some of those. Um, Cause once any number of their scorers get it going, it's going to be hard to stop them. Yeah. So, I mean, certainly we saw obviously the, the huge upset over Purdue, how much the environment helped them um, expect, obviously a, a really large loud crowd on hand for that one, but be difficult. That was a lot, you know, it felt like they captured lightning in a bottle for that one. Uh, might have to do it again to take down, again, one of the best teams in the country, uh, Wisconsin, coming to town here soon. So 15-6 and six overall, 5-5 five and five in the conference uh, for the men's team. It's, it's really crunch time, obviously, as we get here to February, and obviously we'll, uh, we'll keep you updated to a lot of tournament talk uh, to come for both the women's and the men's team, again, as NET rankings, quality wins, quadrants, all that stuff. It's, uh, it's that time of year, huh? It is. It definitely is. But, you know, if... Nebraska has a February like they had last year. They'll be a lock for the tournament. Um, they were outstanding down the stretch last year um, before they came up just a little bit short. So hopefully they can uh, find some of that magic that they had this time last year. Yeah, and I think at the very least it's great that this opportunity is there on the horizon. I mean, last year obviously things had – you know, the women's team struck by injuries, the men's team, also a lot of, yeah, a lot of injuries, injuries, a lot of losses. I mean, it was a lot, a lot different, a lot more optimism this year. So really good to see both the women's and the men's team, again, fighting for those postseason opportunities. So I think that'll about do it for uh, this week's basketball update, but want to share with all of you uh, Life from the Red listeners and viewers out there, look forward to a little bit of a spring, spring sports preview, softball and baseball getting their season started here. I know it's it's crazy as we record this at the end of January, but it's really nice weather out. So it's it uh, is it yeah. is fifty seven degrees Incredible. according to my watch as yeah. we're recording right now. We gotta get out. Phenomenal. <laughs> what <laughs> are we doing in here? We gotta get outside. Let's go. Absolutely, but I mean softball, top fifteen, top twenty team nationally, depending on the poll. Baseball, uh, an NCAA tournament hopeful as well. So a lot to break down with that, and and a, a really really historic season for the softball program that will be next week's episode so hope uh hope all of you stick around join us next week we'll uh we'll update you on the recent basketball results then as always but that will do it for this week's episode of life in the red thanks for watching we'll see you next week